When we move about, we use one of our senses in particular, eyesight. It helps us to find our bearings, to anticipate. But how do those who lack it manage? At the Institute for Blind Young People in Toulouse, locomotion instructors teach blind and visually impaired children to move about safely. Today, Pierre will have to find his way without moving from his chair. He will use his hands to travel through this Lego model of the Institute. Which corridor are you in now? The kitchens. To help them find their bearings, the instructor has recorded sounds of real life. The door is open. Okay, great. This tool, developed by scientists, is called the tangible box. Combined with a model, it helps visually impaired people to perceive space. It's not always easy to project oneself on a map. So here, Pierre, for example, as we saw, has a very good spatial and mental representation. It's quite simple for him. The corridors are delimited by walls, which makes it easier to find one's way around on the map. And the sounds, which can be found in real life when moving around the IGA, are used as markers here. The IJA Institute for Blind Young People and the IRIT, a Toulouse-based computer science research institute, have created a joint laboratory called Cherchon Pourvois, research into seeing. Here, some 20 scientists are developing tools to assist visually impaired people. Today, they are testing a new game called Ritual on the River. Bernard Oriola, an engineer in the laboratory, is trying it out with a friend. Both of them are visually impaired. The board game is placed on a tangible box, which is connected to a computer. You were not discreet enough. The witch saw you leaving her place and cut your way. We made this board game that is interactive. As we go down the river, we push the boat along, and when it moves, it's followed by the software that triggers an event. Generally, it's an audio file that explains the puzzle or gives the meaning of the game. This game stimulates spatial representations, a valuable aid to avoid relying solely on memorized movements. When you've learned a route, it's relatively easy. Let's say a blind person only sees up to the end of their stick, so they can't figure out that the path ends 50 meters further on, or doesn't end, or that there's a junction, until they get to it. Being able to understand an area means greater confidence and less stress. It gives you lots of possibilities to get out of any situation. And that's very reassuring. To democratize this crucial tool, the team has further improved the tangible box. In the latest version, the parts of the frame are printed with a 3D printer. The manufacturing drawings and list of materials are available for free. So anyone can make one for about 200 euros. We have managed to make a device that is extremely simple. There is almost nothing left inside and it works better. And it is much lighter, much less bulky. Today we have a box that's a metal plate with an infrared structure integrated into a kind of 3D structure. Someone in any center can make their own device and start using it almost free of charge. Other than developing IT tools, the scientists also try to understand how space is perceived by visually impaired people. Here, a person guides another one to avoid a zombie attack. The movements and voice of participants are recorded to be analyzed. You have to go straight on. Then you take the last but one exit on the right. The words used will then be examined and deciphered to understand which spatial clues blind people use. 
we've noticed that they tend to use the same perspective, which is egocentric, that is, they put themselves in the position of the token, the pawn that is moving, and their indications correspond to the orientation of the pawn, whereas people who have no visual deficiency are much more allocentric. In other words, they'll say, go up, go down, go left or right. They have an overhead view, a bit like looking at a map. The purpose of the laboratory is to encourage the use of maps by the visually impaired, because the more a young person is exposed to them, the easier they will find them to read as an adult. Like here, with this geography lesson. Pierre, can you check where South America is, please? Go on, check. South America. Perfect, you found it. The teacher uses another tool developed by the researchers. This is a touch table that makes 3D pictures interactive. Being able to touch and hear simultaneously reinforces learning and memorization. And we also discovered other virtues, in particular the fact of reducing inhibitions. If you're a learner and you don't understand something and you keep asking the adult, the teacher, what is it I don't understand? What is it I don't understand? After a while, there are inhibitions. You don't dare to ask anymore. But when you're on an interactive device like this, there is no inhibition. You can make it repeat 50 times. It's not embarrassing at all. Designed especially for visually impaired people, the children can even use the scrolling menu on the table. Object deactivated. Food. Deactivated. Language. Deactivated. Activated. By double-clicking, they can ask it questions. I've looked for the currency, the country and town, and the food in South America. Blind people hardly ever have access to touch tablets, especially at that age. When they are older, they will learn to use them, to use a smartphone. But not when they are this young. They don't have access to the digital and tactile worlds. And here, the fact of being able to do what sighted people do, being able to have fun with a digital tool, is a huge source of motivation for them. This technology is also available on tablets. Here is a map with sound clues. This afternoon, it's a treasure hunt in the Institute. Through this game, the children work on their spatial skills by comparing the information on the map with their environment, which also allows them to have fun. With these tailor-made devices, these young people can put aside their disability for a while in order to play and remain, first and foremost, children.